Whoa! Oh, do a Lana song. Do do Lana. Talk about Lana. That's all. That's all I hear. It's the obnoxious. Well, here we are. New Lana Del Rey album. Did you know that there is a tunnel under Ocean Boulevard? Did okay. You? What What are these names? She she has chemtrails over the syphilis on a Thursday afternoon after hot pot. <laughs> I mean, like, they're good album cover names, but it's just funny that this is her thing now. No, I think it's funny. I wonder what the next one will be. At least she's not like Fiona Apple. And this is where you would cue the album cover, and then the whole name of, um, When the Pawn. Hey, bruh, let me tell you something. Let me tell you my Lana lore, all right? It's the Lana lore time. Norman Rockwell, it's good. Most of everything else, haven't listened to. Listen to Born to Die, because everyone was supposed to. Are you particularly um well-versed on this woman, Spell Elizabeth that. Grant? I would say I have my masters in, like, Taylor Swift or Lady Gaga, but I have my associates in Lana, so I'm not, like... Super super educated in the Lana lore, but I do know a decent amount about her. So if I do get something wrong Please don't come for me. I'm trying my best. So you've you've heard this before. I have heard the album But I was like I need a second listen to this because it was very interesting And I just needed to see Kevin react to it as well because it's gonna be really funny. I Don't know what that means, but I'm interested. It's gonna be that's exactly what it means. It's gonna be really funny You know what I think could be fun. What's that? I want to know which songs you are most excited to hear based off the titles. Okay, I can do that. Man, I don't fucking know, but I see that these things are like six minutes, seven minutes. Oh my goodness. Maybe I'm excited for the track that's like 320 because that one's like a normal song. So I think for this one, let's rank them. All right, yes. as we go, we're okay. going to rank them. Here's oh no. And we're going to see what we get. Why do you have Zoom open? Track we got one. Also, we have the lyrics pulled up here, so we're ready to go. And we're ranking them. Track one, the grants. Lana Del Rey. One, two, ready. Mind of you with me. Thank you. One more time. Mind of you with me. Sounds good. Like rocking mountain. Bye. It's a little reaction when you're listening. That's because I can't, there's nothing to react to yet. Mine of you with me, like my part of you, like some part my of you. My ambassador told me when you leave, all you take is your memory. So she's gonna take her memory of that person. Oh. This was a good song. I like this. That was the first song, The Grants. Um, it sounded pretty pretty. Uh, what did you think about it? I think it's a very nice intro. I think it's a very beautiful song. For me, it was it, there wasn't anything too catchy or anything. Like it sounded pretty and all, but I mean, like there was just a, a kind of constant kind of like warm tone with the song overall. Yes, it felt like a sunny VHS tape. Like it's sunny and you're recording. Let's go ahead and put it. The beach, maybe. In our ranking, what we have right now, Joseph. Let's say we put your song like right in the middle, and we'll put songs above, below, and they'll work each other out. Yes. Now we're gonna hit up the title track. Did you know that there is a tunnel under Ocean Boulevard? What? Oh, I never told you my concept of what I think the actual tunnel represents. We'll talk about it after. Hey, huh? She talking about death? Fuck her till she die. Is the tunnel her vagina? I like the constant like beat in the background. Open me up. Tell me you like me. Fuck me then. What does she mean? Someone to give me five? Like five, five minutes? Bucks? No, five minutes. So, yeah, I don't care. see, I love reading along with the lyrics because I always thought she was just saying there's a tunnel under Ocean Boulevard at the end, but she's saying like the tunnel under Ocean Boulevard because it's been abandoned for, I think I read 55 years. And don't forget me. And she doesn't want to be forgotten like something that was once used so much. Bando! Um, that one was good. I like that good one a lot. Song. Just having a repeated kind of lyric of don't forget me is like enough for anyone to kind of relate to. Um... So for me, I would definitely put that above the grants. Uh, uh, yeah, absolutely. The song eats. It is a Lana career highlight in my opinion. Damn. It is. It's very like a lot of the fans really liked it, and honestly, like I wasn't too hot on it when it first came out. I was just like, meh. Was this one of the singles? This was the first single. Okay. This is the first thing that came out. Next track is sweet. This is a short one. 
That was pretty good. Good little piano. I love a good piano. I do love a good piano. And so does Lana. Feels like a Disney song. A little. Whoa, basic <laughs> bitch. Go to Beverly Center and find, find her. her. I'm I sweet. will bet. I'm sweet bare feet. Wait. <laughs> the delivery was kind of funny. It's giving Snow White. <laughs> right? Yeah. Tell me I'm not crazy. It's New York. <laughs> that's the Disney park. Yes, that's it. It's the vibrato. That was sweet. What'd you think about sweet? I actually, I've like, I told you I've listened to it once. This time around, I like it so much more. I mm. think reading the lyrics really sells it for me. I'm a big lyrics guy. And those lyrics were so good. Do you want children? Do you want to marry me? Run marathons on Long Beach by the sea. The whole delivery of that last part of the chorus was good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I thought the lyrics were pretty good. I didn't think it was anything like that I haven't heard before. Absolutely. Or anything phrased in a certain way that would make me... Uh, feel any different or anything, but I still think it was sweet. Definitely did sound a little Disney, but not enough to cringe. Yes. Um, which I thought that was uh, tasteful. Um, I would put this one probably right under the title track. Yep. Um, and right before the first one. Uh, it definitely had its. It definitely had some pretty good moments to it and everything, but it definitely yep. didn't overdo our the title track at all. That was sweet. And what's the next track we got? A and W. So we've both listened to it, but um, we'll listen to it again just yeah, for we'll, the meme. Yeah. Okay, so since we've both heard this song, you we can have come a guess. Sit, sit between us. Nine years old. Uh, Classic <laughs> one. I think I read somewhere that this is her and Jack Antonoff's favorite song that they've ever made. Which makes sense. It's a little scary, right? It is. Bass. It's called... Yeah. What does it mean? <laughs> Who's Jimmy? Is there lore? Who's Jimmy? I think Jimmy ties back to Ultraviolence, the second album. I think. Of course. Oh. I mean, I mean, I like her getting, I like her getting dark and talking about it here. I mean, like everything she's talking about in that first half, it all makes sense. It follows a good story. Having the lyrics pulled up matches the tone. For me, it's the best song that we've heard so far. Why? Lyrically, it's just stronger. So we both put it at the top. Is it rolling? Yeah. yeah remember when the uh, when the footage cut? We took like 30 minutes to get ready again. I think we have matched up lists right now completely. So that's interesting. I if that will keep up. Let's see. Probably Let's not. find out. Track five. Track five. Cinco. Let's Judah go. Smith interlude. What is this interlude do you think it's about? I don't know. I really don't have an answer for you. Why would it come after A and W? Let's think about it like that. I need to read it. And the cat calls out from above. What do you do when a man pulls you out of your car with a gun and says, "Give me"? A I mean, it's gotta mean something. But why does it take four minutes and thirty seconds of my time? What? Do you, why do you think that's the case? I don't know. I don't know. I feel like this is like this is such a frustrating listen that I feel like I'm trying to answer a question on a test at school. It's gotta mean something and there's gotta be some interpretations, but how about you let us know what we what this means. So I'll just put that at the bottom right I, now yeah. just because it's like, uh, but I, think, I guess the least musical that you can really have out of the album right now. Let's, let's go on to the next track. Candy Necklace. This uh, is one that I anticipated a lot when I first saw like the track list. So let's see what she cooked up for us. Mm. Oh. It sounds like it was recorded oh. on like an iPhone. Bubble up. What the fuck is that cracking? I think it was like recorded on like a one take thing. I don't know. Oh, I'm not yawning. I'm not yawning. Are you making me? <laughs> Can we pause real quick? I 
actually do have something to say. See that line right there? You can barely even hear that she said she's feeling super suicidal. Super. First of all, super suicidal. Which those two words? I just feel like you shouldn't describe anything as super, super suicidal. suicidal. Yeah, I mean, there's no, probably some you guys. That. Like you can just say suicidal enough, and that's enough weight. You don't have to say it. Su- super. So for feeling super suicidal. But it's interesting how you could barely hear that in her. Yeah, no. You can't understand any of it. Ooh. Ooh. I love a good piano solo. We don't hear that enough. I like that piano solo. I like the song. It's very creepy. I feel like I'm hearing something I'm not supposed to hear when I listen mm. to this. Does she get creepy like this often? She gets eerie, kind of. A... She can. It's happened on occasion, but not really to this extent, I'd say. Mm. I did like the creepy aspect of it, too, and I did like that piano solo, but it took a while to get there, in my opinion. Um, I think we had to kind of... <laughs> for a bit before we really got there. For me, I would put this... I'm going to put it right under the Grants um, and right above the Judas Smith interlude. Yep. Um, I think that it's a lot above the interlude, in my opinion, and I don't think it's too far below the Grants. I was thinking of putting it above, above it, Grants, but yeah. I, I agree. I think it should go right there. So we we have the same list again, but um <laughs> Yeah, I like a piano ballad, so I'm a little I will be a little easier on this one. I like this one a lot. Just cause it's really it's an easy listen. I would put it on my sleep playlist. It's my most <laughs> it's my no like hear me out. Is it okay if I put on my uh, my sleep music? No, I'd rather you not. Was that a yes? Any piano ballad, not because it's boring, but because it's an easy listening song. It's yeah. soft, it, it helps me go to sleep. I have like a five hundred song playlist. Of songs that go to sleep. Yes, and Lana, like, pollutes this playlist. It's one of the reasons why she's one of my most listened to artists. Oh, it's mostly God. because I fall asleep listening to music on that playlist, mm-hmm. and she's, like, a, a, a generous uh, part of it. What is this called? John Batiste Interlude. Okay, let's listen. It sounds like Zelda for a second. A lot of people have been saying that on Twitter. They're like, she's in her Zelda era. Oh, my God. It definitely sounds better than the last piano track. Or, the, not the last, the last interlude. Yes, because there's some musicality to it. Okay, that was an eventful um, interlude. Um, still like an interlude and everything. It sounded fine, but I did like how it was definitely some highs and lows there. Yeah, I like um, how like uh, musicy it is. I, I like how the music so is musicy. But it is. It's very. Um, uh, it's got some. <laughs> What do you think her inspiration behind this album is? I have no idea, man. I have to finish it first. Again, the second time through. Uh, I would put this above the first interlude, but not yes. above Candy Necklace. Yes. Uh, We're on the same page again. It def- yeah, we I still have matching, you know... We're halfway through basically, right and we're still on the same track. Maybe we I will say, I will say, this part of the album seems like it's slowing down a little. Like, I'm, I'm wondering where she's going. Uh, it feels almost a little, I don't want to say lost, but it sounds like it's definitely like just like dragging its feet a little. Oh boy, then are you ready for this one? How long is this one? It's one of the longer ones. It's a slow one. Kintsugi! No, this song's really sad, I'm not gonna lie. I honestly like what her voice in the piano is doing here. No, I'm telling you, like, the only reason why Lana can get away with a song like this is because her voice is so unique. Woo! I didn't catch that on my first listen. How? It's the one thing that's happening right now. <laughs> you said that this was gonna be. I don't know. I'm 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 following along with this right now. Yeah, no. I, when you read along with the lyrics, it's it's a beautiful song. Ooh. I do like how the piano has a personality on this album. Yeah. Like things like that happen. You prepped that one for me like it was gonna be like a worse song and just boring. No, no, it's just when I first listened to it, I didn't do it with lyrics. Mm-hmm. So I was also okay. This really doesn't help. The first time I listened to the album, I was on about two hours of sleep on the bus to work at six a.m. Oh, the perfect so time to listen like, to the new Lana Del Rey album. That was, I think, maybe the worst mindset I could have been in to listen to an album like this. But I have deeply changed my mind about a lot of these songs i will put this song i don't know where i want to put it yet i will put mine i forget what sweet sounds like but i'm gonna put it right above sweet stop copying 
I think that this song could go up and down a little more just because there's so much to it that I still think I want to. I think it has the potential to hit two. Really? Yeah. On a good day, if I if like I think in about a month, I'll have that decision made. Mm. Now, what is the next track? Fingertips. Caroline. She's talking about Charlie XCX and Caroline Polachek. Wait. This album, you'll see my facial hair growing <laughs> by the end of it. Yeah, there's a lot of death on this. Whoa. She doesn't sound like herself there. Or she sounds different. It sounds like a lot of um, the trouble with this album is like, I mean, the title track is like she doesn't want to be forgotten. Um, and maybe she thinks these are a bunch of people who have died and people are forgetting about. And like that's what scares her. Yeah, I think this is just about growth and and the concept of death and I think a big theme in this album is family mm -hmm. um, I think family has popped up in a good amount of these songs I think this album really is focusing so far on her career who she's become over the years and her kind of perception on like this concept of the wheel of life mm -hmm. see my concept was that like the album is like going through the tunnel under Ocean Boulevard and you come out one other end as a changed person underneath the tunnel is something that's been forgotten something that's stashed away so all these songs are like deep an Alaskan bullworm right it's like the Alaskan bullworm these big secrets or thoughts that you kind of keep to yourself that you are kind of shining a light on as you veer through the tunnel to get to the other end where never, the light is I never thought of it like that it's very interesting uh, She, I, it sounds like she's had a lot of these issues for a long long time and yeah. she's finally been able to like articulate it in a certain way this is instead a, of just rebelling yes this theme of like her her relationship with her mother has been going on since born to die since like this is what makes us girls even mm -hmm. other songs but yeah this is the like most um raw and just brutally honest uh way that she's expressed that kind of relationship in a song and i think that makes it um lyrically kind of one of the most captivating ones here Sonically, it's nothing too crazy. So I think I'm going to put this one... Uh, maybe... I was going to do that! Oh my Just god. Just do it. You know it's right. It, I put Let's it directly... see how long we could keep this going. Directly under the grants. And you did the same thing. Let's begin. This is Paris, Texas featuring Simmel. That I was like, I knew you would get a, you would get a kick out of that. I want to break my wrist. There's this theme of making it seem like she's in Europe when she's not. I like these high notes on the piano. She's going into a weird register that's high and different for her. I, I don't hate it. Thoughts? Um, where was the feature? I think the piano was him. Okay. You well, liked it? I, I liked this one on my first listen. I thought it was good. I like that it's not full four. I like the way she's singing more. I, like but I don't like more. the first line. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, that was good. That gave it such personality, in my opinion. I think that's my favorite part of the whole song. It definitely sounds like something a little different. Like, we're starting a new side of the album and everything. But it's nothing crazy for me. Nothing too crazy lyrically or anything. Um, I'm glad that it was short. It, I think it knew its pace. But honestly, yeah. why are you manspreading so much? Get off my side. I'm just my legs hurt. It's going above the John Baptiste. Yeah, I'm putting it low. That's our finally broke the chain. Yeah. How dare they? I mean, I, w I might have to listen to Candy Necklace to really um, be sure of it again. Let's go to the next track. Um, you can introduce this one. It's right here. You should say the whole name. <sighs> Fuck, it's one of these. What is it? Gra oh, Grandfather, please stand on my shoulders of my father while he's deep sea fishing. Does that mean kill him? I mean, yes, so. All right. Grandfather type beat. Oh, God. Ooh, I already like the flow. I like. I know exactly what she's singing about here because they always like doubted her artistry. They were like, "Oh, you're just a scam. You're you, none of this shit happened to you." Wake up! Here we are. Incredibly, also a white woman. Yeah, that's pretty bad. I, what? What is she saying? This one does sound a lot more hymny, like very subtly religious. Whoa! I don't hear her like that again. I agree. The song is quite religious, but I don't. I can't. 
wrap my head around why we want to drown her father. Yeah, me neither. Honestly, it sounded a little too dramatic than I think it should have. I like the, how the, the dramatic yeah. part didn't really like hit as severely as I feel like it should have. It's not too bad, but I think maybe I'd put it honestly, maybe let's just say a little above Candy Necklace right now for me. Uh, I'm putting it above Paris, Texas. Okay. I'm putting it above Paris because I just think it fits the theme of the album better and I like the production better. Okay. So the regular song. The next song was my favorite on my first listen. Oh god, context. Let's I go. like I like this one a lot. What is it called? Um, this one is called Let the Light In featuring Father John Misty. Oh that man, okay. <laughs> Is that what this is supposed to be a love song? Because I'm not getting too much of that yet. This is where I feel like she's getting to that other side of the tunnel where we're starting to see the light. Okay. Let the light in. Okay, okay. I love the violins that go in the back, especially in the last chorus. Oh yeah. It makes it. And then it's a minute outro of just instruments. Just builds down. Oh, that sounds nice. That sounded pleasant. Um, It's interesting how she has all these features but they're mostly like background, background. that's become like a very mainstream thing as of recent very similar to her uh involvement on the taylor album yeah i don't like that they do that if you have a feature no, like, label like that like, i want really... like yeah i want you in like it's like astroworld where like yeah. you didn't know who the features were but like they they were there mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. what i mean it's like the it's the antithesis of that yeah it really is um, we are on some nicer songs but this is not near the top for me it is probably right under the grants this is right here for me. I like this one a lot. It's the fourth best for me. I think maybe the length of the album is getting to me at this point because yeah. it's not feeling like too much right at this point. So They just look more and more beat up. <laughs> there's more to go still. It's not like anything is horrendous, but it's long. This album is long. But good, but long. My eyes are getting heavy, but Margaret. it can be heavy for Margaret. Dude, Margaret. Yeah, Mordecai. Just play it. It is playing. Are you serious? Listen. Don't touch me. Remember when she said she's a white woman? I like how it's like... What? She sounds different. <laughs> I don't like his voice on this. Yes, I'm fine. I'm not trying to. It's yell almost at midnight. That's why. That's right. When, when you're old, old you are old. old. I will have to say. <laughs> you're saying she should retire. She should retire. <laughs> or get better right here. Well, she said it was a simple song. <laughs> That's facts. You know, some say boredom creates. Cr By the way. The party is December 18th. <laughs> oh my god, that's so ridiculous. This song is so stupid, I love it. I cannot wait to see where you write this. Okay, we're done, but I... Oh no, there's another minute and a half. No, there's not! What else is she gonna say? That's it. Next time I get pissed, <gasps> something's gonna happen. <laughs> Jack and those fucking saxophones, man. They're like every song. Um, I would like to go back to the December 18th line. Uh, I need to properly hear that again. December 18th. Let's watch the side. That's so funny. I don't know where to put this. Remember when he accidentally uses this side of the belt? And he just whips you with a metal object instead of like... Oh. I, I think this song is fun. Just because it's silly, I have to rank it like... I'll put it above Candy Necklace for the creativity and s silliness. I enjoyed it as a listen. Yeah, it it's goes, a song I won't go out of my way to listen to. Yeah. But if it were to come on, I'd be like, okay. For me, put it above Candy Necklace too, but under Grandfather. La, 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 la. I feel like I've just gone brain dead at this point. Yeah. Let's like, just keep going. It's it, like you have to just keep going, but like, I there's there's got to be something to say. There's got to be a reason why these like someone's listened to it front to back and was like, okay. This is a coherent music listening experience. I'm I'm thinking I'm thinking my concept is right. Because yeah. these songs have gotten happier. I think we're ending we're coming out of the tunnel. Okay. We're Next. we're exiting Ocean Boulevard, y'all. 
Next track is Fishtail. Fishtail. Palm trees and black and white. Black and miles. Watch the sway. You're so skinny inside your mind. Skinny dip inside your mind. I like that. Whoa. Bit of a sober to melodrama type beat. You gotta say black and miles, not black and white. Are you still here? Oh, you are. Fishtail is fishtailing. What do you mean? I like it. I think it's fun. Yeah. It's cute. These outros are pretty nice. Yeah, no, she's been killing it with the outros. I'll give her that. <laughs> I do feel like that felt like a breath of fresh air because of uh, that, the instrumental. She's still kind of talking about the same thing. In the context of everything else, maybe it sounds a little better because it is a breath of fresh air, but... Um, it still is just like I would say pretty decent yep. um, none of these songs are egregious spectacular yeah none of these songs are spectacular and none of these are like awful for any reason maybe I'd put this one right below the grants but I feel like out of context this might not hold the same weight I just feel like it just kind of woke me up a little enough that I might want to regain my vision for a little Peppers How Peppers featuring Tommy Genesis Ah. Uh, with a runtime, you want to be tiny. With a runtime of four minutes and seven seconds. Why? So there's a boyfriend now. We make his songs without trying. Relax. <laughs> oh, now she's the one getting skinny dipped into the mine. That was a lyric in the previous song. Ah. Yes. What does that mean? I don't know. Let's see. Everyone put their hands on their knees when they even think of Angelina Jolie. Negative two. <laughs> so this is a weird like tonal thing where the chorus is completely different from kind of the verse. But I think it's working. Cringe! 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 He has COVID, but we've been kissing, so it doesn't matter. I think this is like a song they made when they were like super drunk. This sounds like such a fun song to make. Is she saying hands on your knees like I'm gonna suck you off? No, I think she's just like... Twirling. No, hands on your knees though. Yeah, that, that one was fun. That was cool. But why the verses like almost stopped it. Like the Tommy Genesis chorus was like... All the energy. I don't know where to rank just, this. I don't know where to rank this either. I mean, why are we waking up at this? What is happening? I'm so confused at what I this album is doing. This. I think I will put this right above Sweet. Wow. That's like just, kinda high up. Yeah, just because I like, I like hands and knee. Got in a rubby and a barry. Right. Diamonds all on my body. Diamonds all on my body. Mm -hmm. Get a get a on my uh, Imagine being in New York. How was New York like when Barty or Cardi came out? Was it lit? I'm so confused that this album and it's like pacing and everything. Like I'm really befuddled. Anyway, the last song. Taco oh, Truck X Venice Bitch. What interpolates Lana's second best song? She's very much the artist that would make a song that sounds like this that's called Taco Truck. <laughs> just wait, just wait. Pass me my vape. My vape. <laughs> Uh, why did she say vape? Hey. That was good. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, my so, so you're gonna hear like the actual like change in quality of how good the song gets because of how good Venice Bitch is to me. Ah! Oh! Oh my god, this song's so good. I, I know, this song is so good. Oh my god, and this is the nine minute song on the album. Yeah, and it's, I never ever skip that song. It's good. It's, imagine like what she's singing, but without all the 808 stuff. Weird that we end the album with this. I think it's, I think this is why, I, this is what made me realize my concept, or my, my theory. Pause it, pause it to talk about it right now. How I, so if I keep going with this like tunnel concept, at the beginning of the album, she's like, I have all these things that, like, affect me, my family and my career and all these things that people think about me. And then there's all these grievances. And that middle part with those two long, slow, emotional songs are, like, that climax of that. And then you kind of come back down. And now that you've dealt with all that stuff, you can kind of start living your life in, like, a newer, brighter way, maybe. Mm -hmm. Or, like, you get a new boyfriend. You kind of go back to your roots. 
back to what people loved you for, which was being that Venice bitch. Mm-hmm. So I think this is her like finding herself again. Mm-hmm. That really does make sense, and I and that uh, if you want to keep that as your interpretation, I think that's a great one. I think that the way that it's done kind of is not as fine as it could be. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I think that it because it definitely like loses me at points. Let's keep playing. Yeah. Yeah. See, that was a good way to end it, but it is a song that's already been made. Exactly. Unfortunately. So now, I don't wait, think... before we get into this, where does this rank? I want to put it higher than it sh- should really allow itself to be, but that's just because it's an old song, but you know what? Fuck it. I'm not going to care about it. Put it above it the grants right, for me. It goes right yeah, below yeah, the grants for me. The yeah, that's that's why. I'm th- <laughs> I do think Venice Bitch is amazing, and honestly, Venice Bitch is probably better than all the songs on this album. Oh, and that's for sure. That's why it sounds so much better. This album definitely had some songs. It's a grower, um, I think. It's probably it's one of those albums grower. where it's like, it's going to age like a really old wine. Thanks for watching. Wait, what did you think about everything that you heard? I loved it. There we go.